Saki's Christophe Porcel captured his second consecutive White Tees Championship. The fabulous Frenchman has now earned a place in the sports history as one of the best lights riders of all time. One final shot remains for challengers to step up and stand on the top step of the podium. We are ready to drop the gate on the final round of Supercross Lights East from St. Louis. Monster Energy AMA Supercross and FIM World Championship. It's the AMA Supercross Lights East final round for 2010. We're in St. Louis, Missouri at the Edward Jones Dome. Hi everybody, Ralph Shaheen and our Supercross champ Jeff Emick along with all those riders lining up in the gate, getting set for the final Lights East race of the year. We're gonna have two heats as usual tonight. Taking the top nine riders to the main, and we'll get our final two out of the LCQ. And our final East main event will have 20 riders for 15 laps here tonight in St. Louis. As always, joining us with all the action from down track side is Aaron Bates with a progressive pre-race report. It's been a courageous comeback for the number 61 of Vince Freezy after he had a crash in Jacksonville last weekend, suffered a massive laceration to his left cheek and also had to have full reconstructive surgery on his cheek. Just one week before Houston, he underwent surgery, had four plates put in his cheek and countless amount of screws as well. It's a very tough time. The doctor cleared him to ride as long as he was able to withhold the pain. He did just that. He finished up 17th. He came back this weekend, came in strong, was feeling a lot better. The swelling had gone down, but unfortunately, the tough luck continues when he took another crash. The last practice of the day landed on that exact same cheek. The good news is he's got over 125 family and friends here tonight to support him through a challenging evening. An incredibly courageous performance by Vince Freezy. Well, there he is, the now back-to-back -back East champ. Christophe Porcel, the Frenchman who joins another famous Frenchman, Mikel Pichon, is the only two riders to win back-to-back -back East titles. So, Jeff, that championship's wrapped up, so what are we racing for tonight? He's just racing for one more win, and uh, the way he looked in practice, the way that he, you know, methodically picked his way through the track, he looked as sharp and as fast as ever, but his teammate, definitely uh, a guy that's looking for a win. Watch the 108 here. Dean Wilson made the run on Baggett, and then went over the bars inside Reliance Stadium, ended up ninth, but Jeff, Blake Baggett, Justin Barcha, rookies who have already won. We gotta get Wilson up on that top step of the podium. Final shot here tonight. Yeah, well, he's he is amped up, and the way that he rides, the way that we saw him go for second place on the last lap, just no holds barred, wide open across the, the, the whoops, was just going for it. I look for more of that here tonight in St. Louis. This guy is fired up. So both of the Pro Circuit guys leading the way as the two fastest qualifiers uh, in this heat. And of course, they're both, like Jeff said, in this heat, along with some other great riders like Brett Metcalf. There you see Freezy on the 61. Troy Adams is here. And we're all set and ready to go. Heat one in the game. Porcel's making a run, but it's gonna go to Metcalf for the whole shot of the 24. Oh, and a little slide out that looked like Freezy once again on the ground. Oh, what a year he has had. Run the whoops, look at Porcel, that back end of that Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki, bucking all around on it, through the sand. 75 foot triple right into that sand, and look at Brent Metcalf, Geico Power Sports Honda has came out. This could be, or well, is his last shot to try to get that first win in 2010. He is, look at that, he's already yanking the reigning champion here. There's Wilson, running up at the front of the pack, in that 108. Trying to get himself on straight to the main and then see if he can't get that win. Here's the start, Jeff. Watch this right here, 61, Vince Freezy, who Aaron spoke about earlier. Look at that, he's just off the whole shot, fourth, fourth across the line and gets into uh, Kilbarger. Oh, yeah. Gets in the back of Kilbarger. That's also Adams down. But look at Vince. How brave, he's just back on that motorcycle. 
These Supercross racers, some of the toughest athletes I've ever seen. Well, and I'm telling you, this guy here, Brett Metcalf, when it comes to physical fitness, you try to challenge this guy to a, a, you know, a run or a bicycle ride, something like that, he will crush you. Split section right there, Jeff. The outside, a little bit smoother. The inside has the sand, but it's a shorter line, and it'll work for Wilson here. Look at him going after Porcel, his teammate. Well, Wilson's fired up, and he actually qualified faster than Porcel today. Ryan Sipes was the fastest qualifier. Wilson was a 53-4, uh, and Porcel was a 53-9, so about half a second faster than the number one bike. And you can see he's pumped up. He's working him hard. Missed two races this year while he was basically trapped up in Canada. Oh, go. oh he triples! Oh, yes. He went for it! Wilson just lets it all hang out and gets the position away from the now two-time champ. That was unreal, Ralph. I haven't wow. seen a light rider triple that all day in qualifying practice, and you might not see it again. Uh, well, I, hey, Wilson knows that's the hot line. Okay, watch this replay here. Watch Wilson. He goes a double, another double. Porcel shuts off, and Wilson just hammers it and barely oh. makes it. Jeff, I mean, we're talking inches oh. between hero and disaster on that move. Yeah, and that jump route is like six feet tall, super peaked out, okay? not We don't see a lot of super steep jumps like that. He's coming back around to that section as we take a look at Dean Wilson here, a little over three seconds behind the leader. Jeff, I think what that shows us tonight, just like there what we goes. saw at Reliant Stadium, and he stretches it yeah. out. Look at that. Now he's doing it on, with regularity. You know, he showed us he was not afraid to go that extra step. And if you're going to be in a two-time champ or go for your first win, that's the kind of thing you're going to have to do. He gets a good hole shot in that main event. He pulls off a move like that on that opening lap. He could be gone and standing on the top step of the podium before the night's done. Yeah, yeah, and some of the 450, well, a lot of the 450 guys were doing that. They were doing it from the left. Wilson's got the left line dialed, too. Uh-oh, look at the back of this group. Left of your screen on the blue Yamaha. Moto Concepts, number 61, it's crazy. Blue bike, blue riding gear with the white trim. And you know, there's gotta be, sorry, Rob, a little bit of extra, uh, you know, just, um, you know, the adrenaline. He's out of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, not far from here. Lots of family and friends like Aaron mentioned. Lepanovich on the 505, and battling with him, Clark on the 43. Steve getting to the oh. inside, making the move, powers away. Sean falls back a spot. That was a battle for fifth. Give it to Clark now. Nice move there. And then uh, that's going to put the out, like Ralph said, up there in the top five. This is a pretty heavy group with Willard, Morgan, and Freezy right there. Oh, Freezy look, tries to make the move. Look at Willard coming through in the 92. He gets by Lepanovich as well. And I think Freezy was going to make a move back there also. They're all right in that fight. This is fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Final lap here, heat number one underway. They go through the split here, some of the sand, that section, that inside in the sand's working a little better than what it was in qualifying practice today. The track actually looks fantastic. In practice earlier, it got really rutted and choppy and the uh, jump faces and the whoops were just completely rutted out. As always, heat number one for Supercross. The track's in perfect condition. Fight for second between the two pro circuit teammates, Wilson and Porcel. The highlighted names in green across the top of your screen. That's a transfer spot, and they are catching Metcalf. This is going to be a battle to the line for the top three spots in heat number one. Well, taking a look at the fast lap right now, it's uh, Porcel with a 52-5. Porcel steps it up, tries to get inside. Metcalf, final corner, takes the win. Wilson gets there before Porcel. Good action in heat one here at the Edward Jones Dome. Supercross lights underway on speed. Back inside the Edward Jones Dome, here are the top nine riders going on. Jason Hussey from Moscow Mills, Missouri is going on to the main. His brother Kyle, however, is going to get a few extra laps in the last chance qualifier. Here's Aaron. Brett Metcalf scores his first heat race win of the season here at the final round of the East Coast. Brett, it's a now or never situation. This is your last chance to take a win in 2010. How bad do you want it and what do you have to do to get it? I want it bad and I got to do that again. Plus a little more at the, at the end there, I got a little bit tight, but uh, you no, know, it's been a good day. Practice has been good. Gaga Pascals, Honda's running great. Just I uh, can't wait for the main event now. 
Check out all the extra behind the scenes video only on speedtv.com as Aaron, Jeff, and myself interview the riders for the latest story right from the track. Go to the Supercross Hub on speedtv.com. 32nd board is up and ready to go. That means he too is just about set to drop the gate and go racing. And Jeff, we already saw Dean Wilson, one of those fast rookies. Here's the other two, Blake Baggett on the 66. And the number 17. You saw him right next to him, a couple bikes over, Justin Barsha. Well, and Barsha's got to win, Baggett's got to win, Wilson has yet, but one thing that all three of these rookies have been, have been determined and fast. None of them are going to get the whole shot, though. It's going to be Sykes on the 46. Lights class veteran. He was super fast today in practice. Actually, fastest qualifier with a 52-3, but now he showed he's fired up here at St. Louis for this final round. Davalos, Barsha, second and third. James Dakota's getting a good start up there, too. Baggett's right behind him in yellow on the 66. Coming through the mechanics area, you see all the encouragement and the mechanics with the pit boards and waving their arms and just telling their riders to get with it. Got to get these guys amped up. I'm telling you, the track is phenomenal tonight. So good. Some of the best dirt we've seen all season and fairly similar to what we had a week ago in Houston. Yeah, but there's but there's more moisture in the soil here. And uh, earlier today in practice, it got really rutted. A little bit loose right now, but I really think that it's going to, uh, you know, that it's going to run up some here. That's that section where you tripled in and made the left before the whoops. Dakota's getting a little bit of the hops there coming through the whoops. Dakota's on that 613 is going to be the subject of our VIP pit pass coming up later in the show. I love those. You get to get to know oh, yeah. a little something about it. You get to see their personality. And I think that you really out of those VIP pit passes, you know, you can kind of see the personality. You match it up with the rider. And you can see why some riders ride like they do. Good battle here. Dakotas is holding his own. Oh, Baggett trying to go to the inside there, trying to shortcut that corner a little bit. Little mistake, but Baggett, he's a real patient rider. You know, even uh, you know the past years as an amateur, he was always very patient, but he's strong, fit all the way to the end. Battle for the lead and a different leader now. It's the 577 of Davalos out front. Davalos on the Star Racing DNA Shred Stick Yamaha sides ride that Moto Concepts FMF Yamaha. You can see the, oh, this, those guys have got the hot line coming down through the rhythm section, but how about Davalos here with one race to go in, in the East Coast season, and he's fired up. This is the best we've seen him ride all season long. He looks, he looks strong now, determined. Well, he's coming off a top five finish a week ago. Finally gaining a little momentum, maybe a little bit of confidence here. His second top five of the year, actually. The other one coming back in Dallas. So Texas was a good state for Martin this year. Dakota and Baggett continuing their battle. And look at the speed that Baggett carries deeper into the corner, Jeff. Well, here's that section where uh, Wilson was tripling over that final jump. Haven't seen anyone here in Heat 2. Boy, Baggett really good through the whoops, and Dakotas took him high. Saved the spot for another section. Well, and you can see right now, Baggett, he's kind of locked into that one line. There's not a lot of rough lines or different ruts. Here they are. Inside he goes again. Now he makes the move. And triples onto the tabletop. That was nice. Kept his momentum going. Didn't worry about the pass. Knew that he had it. Completed that section the fastest way that you can going from the inside. That's a double, and then you triple onto the tabletop. Back to the front of the pack. Right there, they're jumping the triple route. The top three finally nail it. Barsha is in third. This, this is a tough, this 75-foot uh, triple here. The main event later on when that right-hander gets rutted out towards the end of the main event here into 15 laps. Whoa, Barsha. Getting a little off balance there. Here he goes, tripling in. 
It was actually, in qualifying practice, Barsha was tripling out the end of that rhythm section also. Barsha the winner at the Rogers Center in Toronto. With one to go, we take a look at the lap time trials, and it's Sipes right now with a 51.6. He won the fastest lap was Porcel with a 52.4, and that was on the last lap. Remember, Porcel and uh, Wilson were totally battling it out. Our team looking really good tonight. Oh, look at the lines here. This soil, this Missouri clay, Ralph, this all the riders love coming to St. Louis. Just the consistency of it, how it shapes up, gets these nice little ruts, not too rough, not too hard packed, not too soft. It's nice. Look at Davlos. He's dialed in here in St. Louis. Could this be his night? Sound just like a Midwestern boy who grew up loving uh, this dirt all your life, huh, bro? Oh, yeah. Checkered flag, Martin Davalos takes the win. Sipes is going to fall across the finish line jump, and so is Barsha. They're all going to the main. We're going to break. Coming up now on speed in the next two weeks will be some great lights racing from the west. We're headed off to Seattle, Quest Field, and then Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City. And that's where Jake Weimer and Trey Kennard are going to settle the score as Ahu will be number one in the West. It's going to be some great racing. Hope to have you with us. Here are the top nine riders transferring out of this heat. Kyle Gills just misses the transfer spot. But all of our young hotshots, Barsha, Baggett, they're all going on to join Wilson. Watch this, though. At the end of this race, you see Ryan Sipes has transferred. Well, Justin Sipes had a problem. But here's Sipes on the Kawasaki. You're coming across the whoops. Just starts to huck a buck a little and drops the front wheel with two whoops to go. Fortunately, he was able to get up and walk away. Here's Aaron. That's two consecutive heat race wins for Martin Davalos. Martin, you're pulling it all together in the last race of the season. Tonight's track is a very technical one. What is going to be the key to executing it successfully? Yeah, it's a very technical track. I think um, a great start would, uh, will help a lot. There's a lot of rhythm sections that separate people. I think if you have a clear track, a good start, you, I think you can check out and put 15 consistent laps. But I just can't think of the DNA stress sticks, star racing Yamaha guys, fly racing, Leah Brace, the Bell Helmets, Von Zipper guys, my mom and dad that are watching, just uh, Davey's been behind me, Johnny, uh, everybody on that crew, thank you so much for uh, the support. The last two riders to make it into the main come from the LCQ, and Jeff, this one got off to a really rough start. Well, that first turn is really tricky because it makes a couple bends before you get in there. Watch off this start as everyone's just battling for that spot. 675 goes down, Sipes gets out, the 99 gets caught up there, and watch this next year, the 99's in this one also. That's top for Ingalls, you see a whole bunch of riders getting torn up in this one, and you saw Adams on the 65 went way short. He'd been in a transfer spot there, Jeff. And it goes to Cunningham, who gets out front. He will take the transfer spot, and Levi Kilbarger will go with him. So Kyle Cunningham and Levi Kilbarger out of the LCQ and into the main. Pit party was a real good time here in St. Louis. Always one of the better ones of the year. We'll be right back. Main event getting ready to go. St. Louis, Missouri. There you go, the Edward Jones Dome. We're inside that beautiful building right there, right here along the banks of the Mississippi River. Supercross in town inside the home of the National Football League, St. Louis Rams. You got some more racing coming your way here on speed with Supercross lights. This is the last round for the East. We'll wrap up the West in Seattle and then Salt Lake City's Rice Eccles Stadium. Then we'll bring both classes together. You'll see it live, the shootout from Vegas here on speed. Should be a great night, Sam Boyd Stadium. Well, James Dakotas has already put himself into the main event, and now he's in our VIP pit pass. My name is Jimmy Dakotas. I'm number 613, and I'm a privateer. I grew up in Peabody, Massachusetts, racing the local NESC series with John Dowd and a bunch of other guys. 
And my dream date would have to be Aaron Bates, just because she's real hot and she's just a moto chick. Time to hang out. Being a privateer and being in the top 10 is a huge accomplishment for me. It's very rewarding. I feel like I've worked really hard to get here, and it definitely has its negatives and its positives to it, but I think that overall, definitely beneficial for me. My dream job, if I didn't race Supercross, would be playing poker. I just enjoy being at the table and having fun and hanging out. Xbox or PlayStation, I'm gonna have to go with Xbox, play MX for a TV reflex, call my buddies online, and uh, definitely Xbox. I'm Jimmy Dakotas, and that was your VIP Pit Pass. Well, if Jimmy wants to get introduced to Aaron, probably the best thing for him to do is win the main event. She'll be there at top step of the podium. Lots of time right there, FaceTime. <laughs> Let's see it. Yeah, well, he's going to have to battle with Dean Wilson here tonight because that 108 is really going for a win. Well, like we've talked about tonight, you know, he's had uh, just uh, such a tremendous season after missing those races, but he's just just really faster. And watch what he does here in this heat. He was one of the first lights guys to triple. Look how he had to stretch that out just to do that. That shows me that, I mean, he's not afraid to take some risk. He's absolutely going for it. So uh, Dean Wilson, definitely one of the riders to watch along with the other rookies. This season's been great. One more to go. I'm excited. One more main. It should be a great one. And we're getting ready for that main event here now. And don't forget Monday, don't miss an all-new episode of Fast Track to Fame. It's the talent competition so wild, it can only happen trackside. Fast Track to Fame from Texas Motor Speedway. Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. Getting ready. Heat races are done. The LCQ's in the book. That means it's time to line them up, get them in the gate. 20 riders, 15 laps. Final East main event when speed comes back to St. Louis. Christophe Porcel has wrapped up back-to-back -back championships in the East. And we are ready to go with the main event to see if he can get one more win before the East Championship is over. Brett Metcalf, Martin Davalos, Heat winners here tonight. We'll see if they can stop the Porcel freight train. Here's Aaron. The number 46 of Ryan Sykes said it's been a hit and miss season all season long. He said he's got all the ingredients to put together a win. A good start, stay consistent, and also be mistake free. He did take home a second place in Dallas, and he was just about to take home that first heat race of the season until a slight mistake had cost him. Well, he said he hopes that he got the mistake out of the way, and he plans on riding 15 solid perfect laps. Jeff, let's take a look at the track map here for the Lights Main. Well, it's going to be all about the start here for Sipes. We've seen what he could do in Dallas when he got the start, when he was so close. First rhythm section tripling in just before the whoops. That's going to be key for these lights, guys. And this right-hander before the 75-foot triple, when that thing starts to get rutted up, especially on the first lap when there's a lot of uh, traffic, that's going to be tough. Also, this rhythm section on the right side of the start, if you can triple out, quad and triple, that's going to be the hotline. But it's really going to come down to the starts. Could it be Sipes' night? We talked about Porcel winning that second championship. It was the 17th Lights Class Championship for Mitch Payton's Pro Circuit Squad. Unbelievable success for Mitch Payton's organization. Those Pro Circuit guys know how to win a championship. They might get their 18th when we head back to the West if Weimer can pull it off. Here we go. Final East May of the year. Barsha out front early. Couple riders down. You see Dakotas comes by your screen. Porcel's right in there. Dean Wilson's in there. Metcalf comes jumping into the frame. And in the final race, it's a pair of teammates on the Geico Power Sports Honda. A rookie and a veteran that are low. Oh, oh Porcel's Porcel got big problems. Hung up on the tough block. The champ knocked out early. And that is after the first rhythm section where that triple into the turn that we've talked about so much. This is gonna sit, by the time he gets out of here, Ralph, he very well could be a lap down. Let's see what happened to the fast Frenchman. There he is on the number one. Well, let's see, he goes to, and he cuts across. He really needed to stay 
He needed to stay high to the rider's right, but he tried to jump across to the left and got into one of the Yamaha guys. I'm not sure which, who that was, but that was, was purely miscalculation and bad judgment by the two-time East Coast champion. It was Vince Freezy on the 61, and a lot of times, Jeff, we see guys just go right over the berm. He got hung up as Barsha pulls off the big whip. And boy, Justin, already into the flow. And well, here he is coming up on Porcel now. Porcel will go a lap down. Wow. Well, and, and the 17 and the one have had a lot of run-ins, a lot of attitude between these two riders this year. Looks like in this final round, Barsha doesn't win the, win the war, but he may win this final battle after the war's over. But I tell you, he's going to have his hands full with the 108 of Dean Wilson. So once again, it's coming down to the rookies here. Metcalf's in there, and how about Sipes? To put a period on Porcel here, realize there have been seven races so far. Five times he was the winner. Once he finished third in Toronto, the only time he finished outside the top five was a seventh at Dallas. Tonight, dead last. Well, you see Sipes and Davalos getting together. Uh oh, Sipes misses the triple. Can Davalos make up any ground? Here he comes on the 577. Martin trying to get around to the outside and carry the speed as they scream across the track to the other side of the stadium. And both riders want to triple that onto the tabletop. Oh, double single out. Uh oh, somebody's down. That's, That's Wilson. Wilson. Wilson with problems. Wilson on the 108, our race leader. Oh, I shouldn't say leader. He was in second. It's Barsha, who's the leader. Wilson dropping like a rock, though. And that's going to put uh, Metcalf up into second. So once again, but watch this replay here. Watch on the right-hand side of your screen here is Wilson. Comes in here, just loses traction. You see that line coming right through there. He just kind of scrubbed a little too hard. There went Metcalf high, and here comes Davalos and Sipes. So he's already got past Davalos again. Wilson, you know, he's going to ride like a man possessed. He's got, I just feel he's had so much pent up energy after all of that trouble getting back into the U.S. after the Toronto round. And he's looked great here tonight. A couple of falls, but overall, he's been really fast. Trying to get himself up onto the podium here. Well, Marcia, meanwhile, about nine and a half seconds out front, Jeff. Nine and a half seconds on lap five of 15. Yep. Fired up. Wow. And Wilson, he's, he hasn't been afraid to take some chances. Right here's that triple in. Davalos nails it too. And then going across the whoops, Wilson with that all that uh, leg length that he has, he can just really get back on it if he needs to and work the bike. Boy, that triple is really a stretch for these guys, too. There's Porcel just rolling around on the inside. We'll see Porcel again in that East-West shootout when we get to Vegas in May. Pablo's not able to do anything yet with Wilson as they fight over court. Barsha, Metcalf, Sipes in front of him. Issues deeper in the field as we drop back to find some good watch, action. Watch this replay. This is Cunningham. He's going to go here. Clark's going to go here. And what did I just draw? Ralph, what happens with those lines? Uh, two lines that connect. They have connected as Clark comes in stumbles just a little bit and unfortunately Cunningham's front wheel kind of gets wedged in there. Both those riders should have made that through cleanly but everything went wrong. Nothing has gone wrong so far for this guy. Justin Barsha. Wow. And I tell you if he's able to keep this thing on two wheels and all the way to the checkered flag it's going to be a little vindication here because the reigning champ Porcel and quote the kid here, Barsha, they really haven't, haven't uh, got along too well. There's been, you know, they've, oh, Barsha, Barsha, man, he never gives up. And Jeff, I was waiting for you to finish. I was going to bring up the point that the night that he was leading in Toronto, if you remember, he almost tossed it away there, went completely off the racetrack and brought it back on.
He is an incredible rider with an amazing amount of talent. He just rides so hard on the edge at all times. And Sipes is down. Remember, hard. his brother Sipes, Sipes' brother Justin had big issues in a hard crash earlier tonight as well. Sipes was running third. He's going for second, trying to steal the spot from Metcalf and just, oh, just misses that one. And you can see he's oh. not moving. He smacked the ground pretty hard after that. They're still not up. But you see the track workers putting the bike in, you know, as keeping a, him out of harm's way. Now, this is where Barsh is at right now, through the whoops. You see the yellow flags? Those are for Sipes. They yeah. almost were for, for Barsha the lap before, that same lap. The Asterix medical crew right there assisting the Sipes, who just crashed very hard. Well, and that's going to be devastating. He had a podium ride on the way. You see halfway. Fortunately, even after he augered in, Sipes is able to walk away from that one. Unbelievable. And these athletes in Supercross. Barsha, 12 seconds in front of his teammate on the other Geico Power Sports Honda. Now I want to talk about Barsha Ralph here. In qualifying practice, all season really, he's been off the pace. But he has had the ability, when the gate drops in the main, you know, as you look at this huge gap between first and second, but. Barsha is one of those riders that when the gate drops in the main, he knows how to get it done. He rises to the occasion. Now you see Matt Cap on the 24 with Wilson behind him. They're fighting over second. Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki and Wilson trying to get on the podium one more time here in the East. Well, and Metcalf, he won that heat race, and he said he tightened up a little bit at the end. He's going to have to shake it off. Here comes Wilson. Wilson. inside, taking the move. I got a feeling Metcalf's going to take it back. He tried to carry the speed around the outside, and it worked. And now they come back through this section. Can Wilson remount a challenge through the rhythm section? Metcalf with the advantage. Well, and I see one of the mechanics there said right whoops if that was Metcalf's mechanic he's telling him to get to the right because that's where Wilson has got the hotline and he's making up all the time that is a really sharp comment Wilson was really on a tear Jeff he had a third and a fourth actually a fourth a third and a fourth in Atlanta Daytona and Toronto and then he had the issues trying to get back across the border from Canada and it cost him two rounds. He came back and finished ninth in Houston. He's trying to get back on the podium here tonight. Look at that oh. power move. Blows oh. right by Metcalf, who has a big issue. And Wilson's now second. Yeah, and, and Lipinovich there, the 505 set all of that up and just kind of had the line. And Metcalf did not triple. Wilson just blew right by. Let's see if Metcalf can. Whoa, Wilson. Dancing on that front wheel as he tries to get around Sean. Makes it happen. Metcalf may not have to do anything except no. Wilson just do his thing because he's been all over the place tonight. He's been fast, he's been ragged, but one thing, he has been exciting and he's going for it here in the final round. So he's more coaching. issues in front of them too. You see another rider down right there. It's Levi Kilbarger. Getting back on his feet. Wilson and Barsha, the two youngsters, running one and two. We talked about these two guys and also Blake Baggett, the other youngster. Baggett, another winner on the tour. He's running in fifth. There he is right there, Baggett. Back in fifth behind Davalos in front of Cunningham. Well, Baggett took a look over his shoulder at that Monster Energy scoreboard. You know, we call it the Green Monster. It's got all these, all these nicknames. And Baggett was looking to see what position he was in and what positions are in front of him. I've never seen a rider use that to his advantage like this rookie has. And I'm telling you, he's been spectacular this year. He's had, he's in hot and cold at times, but I've been so impressed with his riding and, and you know, his aggression. He's been, uh, he won that race in uh, Dallas. It's been fantastic here for the Rockstar Candidate Pet Food Suzuki team. Tell you what, you look at the young riders in the lights class, whether you're talking about Porcel or Baggett, Barsha, Weimer, Kennard, any of these guys getting ready to come through the lights ranks and the sport of Supercross is in very good shape for its future. Well, there's, there's a, the talent pool is very deep. And it, and it seems like that, uh, yeah, when you talk about that, there, 
that right now, like you said, it, it's deep, and the amateur racing program here in the U.S. is really functioning properly. And now what we've seen with the age change, where riders have to be 18 to ride professional as opposed to 16, that's going to let these riders mature and develop a little bit more before they can jump up and here. And we should see Porcel, and we should see Weimer and Kennard all moving up to the big bikes next year. In fact, Eric Kehoe, team manager from Honda, telling me earlier today they're working diligently and very hard on getting Kennard taken care of, Aaron. Okay, that's continued right now for Christoph Kertel's team. His mechanic, Kyle Bentley, was just muled off by Doc Bodner and the Asterix medical team. He twisted his ankle right off the rut, right off the start gate as he was making his way over there. Just goes to show you how much strength, the power that those guys have as well to manage through all that pain. He tried to make it through all 15 laps, but he decided he was going to cut it short with the way this race is going for Kristoff so far. Well, hey, with the way it's going, we got the number one plate. You know, a, a lot of people could say that this race was meaningless, or at least if you're a Porcel, you know, championship's already in the bag. But for Barsha, this is a huge race. If he can pull those off, this, this will be a huge win for him also. Big step forward for the rookie and his team. And I can't wait to see Porcel, Barsha, Weimer, Kennard, all those guys go out it in Vegas. That's going to be one of the best shootouts we've ever seen. Well, and that's the thing about the East-West shootout in Vegas is it's not always the champ. It seems to be that a guy like Barsha, Wilson, and back in the days, uh, a name that comes to mind was Nathan Ramsey. If he didn't win the championship, he would come to that final race and just really want to make a statement. And with one lap to go in St. Louis, the kid, Justin Barsha, is making another statement. He is pumped. As he's working that final lap, got the win in Toronto. Very similar type of deal, strong performance. Major mishap somewhere near the end or right in the middle. And he finds himself working his way on his final lap to ceiling win number two. Well, and, and, and remember... Look at him celebrating in mid-flight. Well, and, and that's because he made it through that whoop section clean. Just like in Toronto, like you said, he almost went down. But Barsha has a way of riding with his feet off the peg. Reminds us a lot of Bob Hanna back in the day. Look at the fans celebrating in the crowd with him as they go by. Look at them all standing on their feet, cheering this young rider on. He's quickly becoming a rock star in the sport. Justin Barsha already a fan favorite. Gets career win number two as he lights the candles in St. Louis. How about that? What a whip. And it's Dean Wilson, second place. What a ride after being on the ground. And Jeff, it's his career best finish in Supercross Lights East competition. Wilson back on the podium with a second. Look at that. That is a happy kid there, huh? Snikey is mechanic. Everybody at the Geico Power Sports Honda team. That was huge. What a way to end the series and carry the momentum into Vegas. No doubt about it, Barsha right there all season long in the East. Porcel's wrapped up the title, but Barsha has let everybody know that this young man is going to be one to contend with for years to come. Maybe it, maybe it was the hair, Ralph. He just cut all that long, yep. those long locks off, right? Well, and Lighten you know up. what, Jeff? With that second place finish, or with that win, his second of the year, I was trying to say, he should move up to second in the points. That was a big night for Justin Barsha. <laughs> Great night of racing here. Barsha taking the win. And I've, I've said it before, Ralph, something about this Missouri clay. The riders love it. He takes the win, and we'll be right back to talk to him on the top step of the podium. A lot of that going on. People cheering as Justin Barsha takes his second career Lights East win. Here are the results. And one guy you're not going to see anywhere up near the top of this is going to be Christophe Porcel, because the champ is going to end up finishing at the back end of this one in 20th out of 20. There you see it. An unbelievable night for him and a great night for Justin Barsha, Aaron. The celebration is definitely on. He came in as the rookie this season and leaves the series with a second victory. Justin, did you exceed your expectations? Exceeded my expectations today for sure. You know, I'm so happy. You know, I had a rough day. I wasn't terrible in, uh, in times. And, you know, me and my team, 
you know, they made a change right before this race. I didn't know what was going to happen, and those guys are so smart and did an awesome job. These dirt work guys out here, the track was insane today. So good. And you know what? I'd just like to thank my family and friends and Geico Power Sports Honda for helping me out. Mistake, it almost cost you out there. You regrouped. You managed to come back for the win. What was it that happened? Yeah, I got a little squirrely through the whoops. Those things are gnarly right now. They've been gnarly all day, so I just kind of held on, and <laughs> he's like, all right, let's take it easy. I had a 20-second lead, so it was just an incredible race. Looking forward to the East-West shootout coming up in a couple weeks in Las Vegas. What are your expectations there? Oh, man, you know, do the same thing we did here. That would be incredible. Go home with the new Tundra and stuff like that. So, yeah, I definitely want to win it. Congratulations. A lot of money, big truck, and a yeah. lot of prestige for winning that out there in Vegas. Well, and it's a huge confidence builder for him. I mean, he's loving it. He is living a dream right now. He'll come back next year and see if he can wrap up that championship. More to come from St. Louis. On an all-new bull run. Team Lambo will do whatever it takes to get ahead. In leg nine, if you're not first, you're in the challenge. And last place is bull run. One hell of a run. show you those points. These are the final points now for the East. Varsha should have moved up to second place and does. Austin Stroop, you might remember, got injured and he held second going into Houston and has now dropped to fourth due to injury, of course. And let's check in with Aaron. The look of frustration is written all over Dean Wilson's face. Dean, take us through the crash that took you down there and why you're so frustrated. Yeah, you know, I definitely really wanted to win tonight. You know, I I feel like I deserve them. I've been working hard and, uh, you know, I just had a little tip over. I was in second and behind Justin and he pulled a little bit at the beginning, you know, but, you know, I just wish I could have been out there and gave him a good race. I really want to win and obviously it didn't happen, but, uh, you know, I, I gave it my best and that's all I can do. It's a bit of a roller coaster season for you as well with all of the immigration problems, having to sit out in the sidelines for two races. How much of a toll did that all take on you mentally? Yeah, I mean, it took a lot on me mentally. I didn't get to ride for three weeks and, uh, you know what, though, I am just forgot about that, and uh, I'm just glad to be back and be on the podium. You know, I couldn't do it without my Monster Energy Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, Thor, Dunlop, Maxima, you know, everybody at the Pro Circuit shop, they've helped me out a lot, and uh, my mechanic, he's done an awesome job, and I, you know, I can't even say enough about my parents. They've sacrificed their life for me, and uh, that's it. Next time we get to see you is going to be in Las Vegas at the East-West Shootout. How excited are you for that? I'm excited. I mean, maybe I can win that. You know, I, I just want to win. That's all I want to do. But I'm super excited. I can't wait. Thursday in an all-new bull run with Bill Goldberg. Four teams remain, but only three teams can move on to the final round. In this leg of the rally, you can forget alliances. Every man's for himself now. All-new bull run, Thursday, 10 Eastern, only on speed. Back to the podium we go. Brett Metcalf is probably considered a veteran in the lights class at this point. Brett, you made it up onto the box the last race of the season. Are you happy with the outcome of the season? Yeah, definitely. You know, podium's podium. you got to be happy with that, you know. And uh, it was a good race. You know, Dean uh, went down and I got by him. He came back by me. I just tried to race for second. But, you know, Justin uh, all shot and laid the, laid the wood down on it. So, you know, it's good for our Galco Passports Honda team. Dunlop Ties, Fox Racing, everybody, my mechanic Brian, my whole family. And my wife, thanks. Tonight's track looks pretty deceiving. How challenging was it? It was really technical, you know, it got ruddy and uh, the whoops were pretty pretty chewed up and brutal, so it was good, you had to be on your game. Well, the East Championship season is done and now, Jeff, we head all the way west to Seattle, Quest Field, home of the Seattle Seahawks and two shows on speed, lights and the big bikes as well. And we get back to the West Championship for the lights. Well, what is encouraging is that this championship is up for grabs. Also, now that the East is finalized, these guys get a little bit of rest before that East-West shootout in Vegas. And the, that thing is wide open right now. There literally is six or seven guys that could win that thing. And here's hoping we have a beautiful night like the one you just saw there next Saturday night in Seattle. Well, Barsha steps up. He's got two wins. The East, boy, they really delivered, didn't they? It was an exciting championship all the way through. I think everybody knew that Porcel was the guy to beat. For Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from St. Louis. Congratulations to two-time winner Justin Barsha.